us through eternity.
Good morning, Springfield Baptist Church family. It's good to join together with you today, and uh, if you're watching as a guest, we're glad that you could join in as well. Thanks to all who've contributed to the service today and made this possible. I appreciate the extra effort that's required in our present circumstances. Um, please continue to pray for each other and take care of each other as you're able. Marcy's been putting together a newsletter every week that includes our prayers and praises, so make sure that you read that to stay aware of matters to pray for and also information about church ministry. Uh, I should mention, too, that we're thankful that Alex Gavey is home from the hospital and she's doing well, so this is good, and let's continue, as I said, to, to keep each other in our prayers. Earlier this week, uh, Joanne and I sent out a message of encouragement, a short message to young moms. We did this on behalf of the Children's Ministry Committee. Uh, we know that you often already feel stretched and pulled in a whole bunch of different directions. That's what's going to happen as you try to keep up with multiple lives and schedules, as is the case for many young moms. And we also know that this time has provided additional wrinkles and challenges and tasks as we see moms who weren't teachers suddenly having to become teachers and uh, people taking on the, the role of extra time with kids through the course of the day on a regular basis. When we sent out the message, we made reference to a popular word picture that's been circulating on social media. I think it resonated with many people because it's making a valid point and it goes something like this. People say that we're all in this ship together. That's not true. We're all in the same storm, but we can be in very different ships and very different circumstances. Then the word picture, the metaphor, goes on to give examples of different kinds of circumstances that various families might be facing. I like the metaphor, and on this particular Mother's Day, I want to expand on it a little using the ship and the journey as a picture through which to think about some of God's truth. Because as moms, you may be in very different ships, but you are in the same storm. And if you think about it, in a lot of ways, you do want to be on the same journey as well. Let me explain what I mean by this. I think that if we are really to strip away our means of travel and really drill down into what essentially moms want, for their children, the stated destination would be pretty similar. In fact, I think that in most cases, the core of what moms want for their children would be similar whether the mom speaking is a Christian or a non-Christian. You say, wait a second, we, we're going in very different directions. Well, that may be the case, but I think that the end, the desired end, is very similar. similar. I think that's the case because even though sin and the curse have affected and distorted everything. God's design, no matter how distorted, still runs through moms. It's still universal. And here's what I think that those who have committed themselves to be mothers generally want. They may not always know how to get there. They might even use self-defeating approaches. But I think that moms the world over want their kids to have good, fulfilled, meaningful, happy, contented lives, whatever that might mean. And I think that moms the world over want their children to actually love them and care for them and be committed to them. Moms would put a priority on loving and being loved by their children. Now, let me park on that one for a moment because we know that many mother-child relationships are very broken. But even the messiest of mother-child relationships usually have at their root some kind of twisted pursuit of their child's love. There are moms whose hearts are calling out in absolutely broken and irrational ways and screaming, I want you to love me, I need you to love me. They still desire the child of their, their child's love, even if they're not pursuing it, in a productive and right way. Now, going back to the ship metaphor, I'm amazed by the knowledge that sailors had in pre-satellite and pre-electronic technology days, the ability to navigate their destination using the stars. The ocean is an awfully big place, 
in which to try to find anything. When you and I look up, if you live where stars are actually visible, most of us see only a conglomeration of points of light in the sky. Maybe if we look long enough, we begin to recognize some constellations. But probably very few of us would have any idea as to how to navigate using the stars. I do know this. I know that when I look up into my backyard, out into my backyard and up and to the right of the big cottonwood tree, there is one fixed unmoving point. It's in the same place, winter and summer. Everything else swirls around it and moves through the course of the seasons. Even the Big Dipper, which always points to that fixed point, does so from different parts of the sky throughout the course of the year. That fixed point is, of course, called the North Star. It's stable and unchanging, and as I understand it, necessary to navigation in the Northern Hemisphere. Ships, as they sailed at night, would use the North Star as their fixed point in order to help them reach their desired destination. Because of this fixed point, if they wanted to get to London, England, they wouldn't end up in Lisbon, Portugal. If they were aiming for Halifax, Nova Scotia, they didn't end up in Boston, Massachusetts. This Mother's Day, let's be very clear that for us, spiritually, Christ is that North Star, that only fixed point that will get your kids to the right destination. Of course, most moms would want the very best for their kids, lives that are good and fulfilled and meaningful and content, life that is what it should be. But we only have to look around to see how differently moms can define the very best. For many in the culture, the definition has been whatever makes them happy. I just want them to be happy. There's no fixed point. There's no clear direction. There are plenty of ships on the rocks or in the wrong port using that means of navigation. Sometimes, of course, we see the tiger mom, the one who's competing and competing to try and make sure that their kids end up on the top of the heap somewhere. Again, in the whole process, we see plenty of ships on the rocks or in the wrong port using that means of navigation. God's word is clear that we and our kids were made to find fulfillment and meaning and contentment and wholeness in one place. In fact, as we go through the scripture, there are different scripture we could, scriptures we could look at um, speaking from different, uh, slightly, in slightly different manners, but we read things like this. In one place, we read about the promise of abundant life, and it says, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it in its fullness, or they might have abundant life. That's in John 10. In another place, we read that the promise of contentment, it says, as Paul speaks, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know both how to have lots and have little. I am content everywhere and in all things. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. In another place, we see that it talks about the fact that in Christ, we have peace and wholeness and rest. And so we read this, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of the rest will be added unto you. That's Matthew 6. All of those things, just a quick survey through those different passages. Moms, for your kids to live lives that are good and fulfilled and meaningful and content and what they were meant to be, it's important that you have the one fixed, unchanging point to look to and direct your children's gaze to. That's why Jesus says this, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, in John chapter 14. Or why we read in Ephesians 2, He is our peace who has broken down the barrier of hostility. Or why we look in Hebrews, and in the book of Hebrews, we read of Jesus Christ that he is our Sabbath rest. He is our way to experience God's wholeness 
and contentment and peace again and again were pointed in the exact same direction. So moms, you want to have your eyes firmly fixed on Jesus. And when I say that, understand that I'm not talking about looking at Jesus as an acquaintance, but as one who you know, who you are pursuing, who you are seeking to know better and to hear and to understand. With this, then you also need to understand, we also need to understand that we value the destination that Christ points to above any other destination above any other thing that we might tend to look to as fulfillment of what we want for our kids. There are plenty of little joys in your children's lives that you can be happy for. But this is the big one. This is the center of them all. We want to know Christ and we want to point them to the destination that the North Star points them to. The other desire that I'm sure you all want is that you really want your kids, well, you want to know that your kids love you. As I mentioned, this desire can be badly distorted. There are moms so needy in their drive for love that they can cling to their child like a leech and suck the life out of him or her. There are moms who are so set on appeasing and pacifying their child in order to try to keep their child loving them that they let their child become a horrible person. When we consider the guidance of the unchanging North Star and how Christ works in us, how Christ helps you get love right with your child and how Christ helps them get love right when they look to him and fix on him, we understand that this is a priority for us. Where are they going to get a better understanding of what it means to love than in Jesus? It says, as we look in scripture, let us love one another because love is from God. He is the source. He is the picture. He is the example for us of what love is. He is the one where it begins and he's the one who shows us what it is. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, a detailed description of what true and right and clear and good love is as compared to some sort of selfish manifestation that we might call love when it says love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it is not, does not boast, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always provides, it always hopes, it always perseveres. And so we have this very, very unambiguous picture for us of what love looks like. And when our kids understand love as the North Star explains love, there's no ambiguity. There's no misinterpretation. We point them to Christ and they look at Christ and they learn from Christ. And if they do this, then they will love like Christ. And if they love like Christ, you will be loved too. And I'm not saying do this for selfish reasons, but I'm saying do this so that your children truly understand what love is. Point them always, always to the North Star. It says, if we take a look in 1 John 4, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. A little later on in the same chapter, it says, God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us. So your kids must see the North Star. You must continually come back to Jesus, and you must continually point them to that fixed point the one who does not change, who will show them what love truly is. Because we can be drawn off course so easily. Now, as I speak this, I'm probably not saying anything that's unusual to you. I'm not saying anything that's out of, outside of what you would have heard in the church numerous times before. 
And please understand, I'm not trying to throw a cliche at life. You know, sometimes people say that the Sunday school answers, uh, the little kids understood that the Sunday school answers that were the cliche answers that were always the right answers were if they said, Jesus, God, the Bible. I'm not trying to throw a catch-all cliche at you. But it's interesting, in light of today's word picture, to know that in the scripture, the sea, by the sea, I mean the rolling sea, is used pretty consistently as a word picture for the chaos of humanity. Because the sea is roiling and rolling and shifting and unstable. We might be used to thinking of the sea as the beach when we're sitting up on the beach and looking out over something beautiful. But the reality is, I've been down east. I've been in the graveyards of old churches. And if you walk into the graveyard of, of an old church in a, in a fishing town, there are so many graves that say on them, lost at sea. Not because the sea isn't beautiful, but because it's so often unpredictable and dangerous. And it takes the one who is out on it off course and into peril. In fact, at the end of Revelation, John tells us that he saw a new heaven and a new earth, and there was no more sea. Now, when we read those words, we tend to think literally. But what John is actually saying is that in God's kingdom, the chaos and the drift are gone. And it's interesting in that same, in that same passage, he says also that there is no more night since the lamb is the light. Again, we tend to think literally when it comes to light. But what he's saying is that in the continual unveiled presence of the glorified Lord, there is no more evil and there's no more going off course. In the meantime, we live in a time when there's plenty of chaos and drift and evil and off course. And there are even plenty of false directions to go in order to try to find or to lead our kids to contentment and fulfillment and satisfaction and wholeness of life. So in this meantime, we need to fix our gaze on the North Star. This isn't a cliche. So moms and dads, pursue him. Pursue knowing him. Pursue understanding who he is as he has revealed himself. Not just Jesus as a word that we load whatever meaning we want into it, but Jesus as he is revealed to us in the gospel. Jesus as he is revealed to us in the scriptures. We need to know and follow and keep our gaze fixed on him. We need to rely on the star, the North Star, so that we can make thoughtful, personal course correction. Not driven by guilt in the parenting process, but knowing that in grace, he is showing us where to go. So follow him yourself. On this Mother's Day, if I can say anything to you moms, it's follow Jesus yourself. Fix your gaze there and continually redirect your children's gaze to him. Don't wait for crisis and say, what would Jesus, would Jesus want you to do that? Because then Jesus just becomes the whip. Instead, in the comfortable times, outside of conflict, when you're grateful and joyful, as life is going on, as teaching times present themselves, help your children to look to the North Star. Help them to fix their gaze there so that they will know the way to life that is abundant and full and meaningful, and so that they will understand more fully what it means to love, to truly be a person who loves in the manner of Christ. As it says in Hebrews chapter 12, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. This isn't a cliche. It's the recognition that he is the fixed point that we need in a world that's shifting. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your Son, our Savior, who came into a world that was a roiling sea, 
who came into a broken place and through his whole life showed us what it looks like to be the one who loves as God loves, who showed us what it means to live in a way that is honoring to you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our fixed point, our North Star, the one who points us to you, the one who shows us what it means to love. And I ask that you would help each mom who is joined with us today as they're caring for their children, as they're teaching them, as they're pointing the way to be able to keep their own eyes fixed on Jesus, knowing him, growing in their understanding of who he is and of his great love for them, living gratefully, living obediently, living peacefully, living with a sense of the fact that they have life because of you. Jesus is their Sabbath rest. And may they be able to point their children's gaze toward Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining with us again today. And uh, I hope that you will have a, a great week, the upcoming week, as we uh, continue on waiting for news that things are going to open up and that we'll be able to be back together. But in the meantime, may we be people who are living faithfully, who are loving Christ, and who are looking to him as the North Star in our lives. We'll see you later.